Let us go to God in a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, is once again we thank you for this opportunity to uh, proclaim another portion of your word, Heavenly Father. It is certainly a blessing for us to be here this evening. And Father, we just want to uh, do and say those things that are according to your will, Heavenly Father. It is certainly a blessing for all of us to have been translated out of the power of darkness into the kingdom of your dear son. So, Father, we just want to uh, ask you to be with us this evening as your word goes out, that we might uh, get our own individual portion, Heavenly Father, and so that we can apply it to our everyday life. Amen. Father, go with us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. We want to thank um, <clears throat> everyone that thus far had that has been involved in uh, our service today, this evening. Uh, Brother Ben, and he told me to call him Brother Ben, so. And uh, Brother Ted for the songs. Uh, it's just, uh, the Bible says it's just wonderful that brethren dwell together in unity. Um, just want to say a few words, read a few passages of scriptures. And uh, we certainly will be on our way as we end our day of worship today. You know, just want to say a few things about the fact that uh, it's a sad commentary when you have to uh, fight for what's right. Amen. That's right. And, you know, um, even, even in the church, you know, we, we have enough problems uh, fighting off um, those who uh, don't know Christ and the pardon of their sins. And then we have an, uh, another, you know, that's one problem. That's right. And then we have another problem. We have to fight off those who uh, so-called know God. Amen. You know, that's, 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 that's another problem. That's right. You know, and, 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 and as I was studying this uh, lesson um, this week, and I, I was just, I, I just felt like, what does Jesus have to do? I mean, what do he have to do? You know, he, he, he came, as the Bible says in, in John 1.18, he came to let us know the Father. Right. And yet and still, um, he always, in, in this particular case, he, he's facing opposition again from those who so-called know the law or know the word of God, which is these Pharisees, as we talked about this morning. You know, we kind of we kind of uh, illum illuminated the, the, the Sabbath a little bit, what it was about. Uh, we, we talked about the fact that uh, God gave the Sabbath because he, he wanted he, he loved his people. And, and, and the fact that he, he set the Sabbath because he gave some rules. We talked about that, you know, and we said that he he he, he made uh, 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 he, he made it uh, some, some uh, relevant. He made it relevant to them and, and he making it making it relevant to us. And, and then um, he also uh, the third R, you know, I just draw a blank on that one. But but he, um, he rationale. He, he told us why. Exactly. He, somebody was listening this morning. He told us why. So he gave us some rules. He told us why. And he told us what we need to do with it right now and what it's about right now. And so, as I said this morning, and, and I'm not going to be long, I was, I was um, uh, talking to my wife this, this evening on the way down here, and, and we was talking about a, a short flight, you know. And so, um, I told her, we may not make it to Akron this evening, Brother Willie. We might just go to Macedonia or Solon or something like that. But anyway, um, I, j I just want to um, say, a f say a few things. Now, like I said this morning... Um, in our text, Mark 2, uh, 27 through 28, it's also given in Matthew 12 and Luke 6. OK, so this evening we're going to look at the account in Matthew chapter 12. So if you have your Bible, turn to Matthew chapter 12. And just real briefly, we want to just look at this um, uh, instance where our Lord once again, uh, 
just trying to, to do the Father's will, runs into confrontation with these so-called keepers of the law, these Pharisees. Amen. Okay? And the passage we want to read, we want to look at a few of these verses in Matthew 12, beginning at verse number 1. And once we're done, hopefully we can see four eyes. We can see um, the uh, insufficiency, the indictment, the implication, and, and, and the identity. Okay? So uh, in Matthew 12, if you have it, the Bible says, And at that time Jesus went on, went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were at hunger, and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do what do which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath. Number one, there is a insufficiency. You know, when we read this text in Matthew, we see that Jesus once again is confronting these Pharisees. And, you know, they were always trying to uh, trap him up. They were always trying to uh, uh, confound him because they wanted him to break the law. You remember the law was established in Exodus 31, uh, 14 through 15, and it says that if anyone breaks the law, they will be put to death for breaking the Sabbath. Okay, so here they come accusing Jesus' disciples of violating the Sabbath, the Sabbath, breaking rules regarding working on the Sabbath and specifically, specifically harvesting the grain. So just for a few moments, let's just talk about these uh, four eyes. Like I said, number one is um, insufficiency. Num verse one again, at that time, Jesus went on, went on the Sabbath day through the corn and his disciples were a hunger and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. Now, what's wrong with being hungry? The, the disciples were hungry. You know, back in those days, um, they weren't well off like uh, some, of, some, of, some of you all are. <laughs> they, they, they were poor. Jesus' disciples, like I told you this morning, all I got in my pocket is a nickel and a nail. Um, Sister Harris said amen on that. All <laughs> All they, they were, they were poor. They were poor and they were hungry. And so um, the Pharisees wanted to make a big deal out of these disciples plucking uh, the ears of corn. Because they said, uh, why do your disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day? Now keep in mind they are keepers of the law. They, they are getting this from the word of God. Leviticus 19, 9 and 10 states that, um, that when you reap the harvest of your land and thou shalt not wholly reap the corners of the field, neither shalt thou gather the gleaning of the harvest and thou shalt not glean the vineyard, neither shalt thou gather the fallen fruit of the vineyard, Thou shalt leave them for the poor and for the sojourner. I am the Lord thy God. They want to make a big deal out of something that God said was okay to do. Okay, they, they want to prohibit uh, these disciples from plucking uh, these ears of corn when in fact God has set this system up. It was sort of like our EBT cards or our, our welfare system. God has set this up. But see, when when these uh, uh, Pharisees, when they added all these uh, 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 laws and regulations, God did not add all of these laws that they are trying to bind these disciples to. So only thing was on their mind that it was the Sabbath day. They considered this work. They considered that Moses forbade working on the Sabbath day according to Exodus 31, 14 and 15, as I said. So Clearly, working was a violation, but the, you have to ask yourself, was eating working? 
Was eating or plucking these ears of corn work? Well, the law of Moses did not specifically say that uh, just because they were plucking the ears of grain and plucking these ears of corn that it was work. But see, uh, the law didn't specifically address their situation. See, we got to keep in mind that when God sets up his, his laws, there, there, there's, there's specific uh, 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 rules that apply. For instance, the, um, he never said nothing about the poor couldn't go through there and, and pluck these uh, grains of corn off, uh, you know, from, from, this, uh, from this corn. So he never said that. But see, they added that. They added that to their law, just like many men today are adding things to their law, trying to, trying to pervert our minds. So, so Jesus seen a, uh, 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 insufficiency and he said there was nothing wrong with that. They hungry, let them eat. But these Pharisees, they wanted to make a big deal out of it because Jesus now, um, Jesus took up for these disciples. Look at verse three. But Jesus, he said unto them, he's talking to the Pharisees. He said, he said unto them, have you not read? What David did when he was a hunger and they were with him, how he entered into the house of God and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests. So um, now um, the Pharisees, once they saw what uh, these disciples were doing, they accused, as I said, they accused his disciples. But. The problem was that they were so hung up on the law because you remember back in the back in the Old Testament when uh, God fed the children of Israel manna. He told them six days. You gathered for six days. But on that seventh day, you couldn't gather any. OK, so for six days, they were gathered and they were supposed to get twice as much on the sixth day. Is that right? So. In their mind, since this was on the Sabbath, this was work. But it wasn't work because there was nothing in the law that specifically said that these poor people could not pluck those ears of corn. You know, when God told Israel to gather enough manna for six days, that was Israel. That had nothing to do with the poor. God was talking to those people who, who were uh, 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 um, well off, who were, as, as it says here in, Luke, in, in Exodus 16, 29. Listen to what it says here. It says, um, it says, see for that the Lord have given you the Sabbath. Therefore, he giveth you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Abide ye every man in his place. Every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the Sabbath day. So the inference right there is that when he says, let no man go out of his place, I have a home. I have someone to lay my head. But what about the poor? See, he wasn't talking to the poor when he gave that commandment. This was, this was a special commandment to those who had tents to live in. This didn't cover the poor who had no homes. This didn't cover the situation where the poor were just wandering through a cornfield and were hungry. This didn't cover the situation where someone was just traveling down the road and, and on the Sabbath day and they were hungry. This didn't cover the situation where the poor had nothing to eat. They added that. They added that. How did the Pharisees know that God would disapprove of this. They accused of these disciples, but the question is, how did they know that God would accuse them? You know what the answer is? They didn't know. They didn't know because they made it up. It was not in the law. They assumed that they knew God, but they didn't know him. You know, Paul talked about, Paul talked about that to these same Jewish Judaizers. He said they have a what? A zeal. A zeal of God, but what? It ain't according to knowledge. It's not according to knowledge. So they made it up. They assumed that they didn't. So the lesson to us this evening is this. Make sure we know 
who God is. Make sure we know how to apply his word properly to our lives. Because as I said earlier, John came to reveal the Father to us. Look at verse 3 again in Matthew chapter 12. It says, uh, <clears throat> Jesus once again said, but he said unto them, have you not read what David did when he was a hunger and they that were with him? Now, now, I don't know about you, but that's a shot at the Pharisees. Because when Jesus said, have you not read? He was, he was taking a shot at them. So, but see, um, Jesus had to make sure they understood that y- you think you know the law. You think you know the word. Do you really know the word? You see, um, it says that when Jesus came to their defense, he, this is the second I, implication. He, he, he implied three things to these Pharisees. Number one, he said that uh, you read over there what David did, right? That's what he asked me. He said, did you not read? What David did, you remember when David was fleeing from Saul and, and his companions was with him and, 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 and they were hungry. And, and, and David, uh, uh, the, the record of this is in 1 Samuel 21, if you want to read it. And David and, and his companions unlawfully ate that showbread. So Jesus asked these Pharisees, Have you, did you read that? Did you read what David did? And he says that. Why you didn't condemn them? Why you didn't, why you didn't make a fuss about what David did? You see, uh, this showbread that the David ate and this was only for the priest. You remember that? In Exodus 24, in verse number 9, it says, And it shall be for Aaron and his sons, and they shall eat it in a holy place, for it is most holy Unto him of the offering of the Lord made by fire, it is a perpetual statue. You see, David, he did what was unlawful, yet the Pharisees didn't say nothing about it to Jesus. What's the implication? The implication is God is no respecter of persons. See, you can't, you can't, you can't hold one somebody. Uh, guilty and, and, and let somebody else slide by with something. That's the implication. You know, God is not a respecter of persons. You can't, you can't uh, go along with, uh, uh, with brother so-and-so and, and, and don't go along with sister so-and-so. You got, to, you got to treat everybody the same. God is not a, 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 a respecter of persons. So that was the first implication that Jesus tried to get across to these Pharisees. You, you know, you, you, you want to you uh, uh, uh Pick and choose what you want to believe. Same way they do out here in in the denominational world. They want to pick and choose how they want to follow God. Implication number two was, and we read here in Matthew chapter chapter 12, verse 4. It says how he talks about David, and it says how, how he entered into the house of God and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat. Neither for them which were with him, but only for the priest. He said, have you, or have you not read in the law how on the Sabbath day the priests in the temple, they profane the Sabbath and are blameless? You're not blaming the priests. You want to blame these innocent, poor disciples for picking a few uh, ears of corn, but you don't, want to, you don't want to blame David. You don't want to, you don't want to um, blame the priests. So are you going to be consistent in what you teach? Are you going to be consistent in what you practice? Jesus is hitting these Pharisees below the belt. He's hitting them where they need to be hit. He's letting them know that your perception of God's word is not correct. You see, Jesus had a third implication. Jesus told them, look at verse number uh, six and seven. He says, but I say unto you that in this place, one is greater 
than the temple. He said, but if you, but if you had known what this means, once again, if you had known what this means, oftentimes we, we don't even know the, 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 the foundational things of the gospel. And Jesus is telling these so-called law keepers, if you had known what this means, I would have mercy and not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the guiltless. You see, Jesus is hitting these Pharisees right where they need to be hit. You see, we know people, and they bring the word of God to us, but they don't rightly divide the word. Same thing here with these Pharisees. They don't rightly divide the word. You know, the Pharisees, they were all wrapped up in, in uh, the so-called letter of the law. You know, they couldn't see uh, that uh, we serve a God of mercy. Mercy was nowhere to be found with these Pharisees. They had forgotten that God takes care of the poor. God is merciful to the poor. God is merciful to all those who are in need. So the implication was that the Pharisees, they did not have mercy in their lives. Now, the Bible says in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned. For all have sinned. So if, if that's the case, um, God is showing us mercy right now. Look at Psalms. Turn in your Bible to Psalms 103. Psalms 103. Listen to what God says about those who, Psalms 103, look at verse 10 and following. And I'm almost done. He said, look at, he says, look at verse 10 of Psalm 103. He says, he have not dealt with us after our sins. You see that? God has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. And I'm so glad he didn't. I'm so glad he hasn't. For as the heavens is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far have he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children. So the Lord pity of them that fear him. Thank you, Jesus. So, so, so in this narrative in Matthew 12, we see that um, Jesus uh, is not only Lord of the Sabbath, but he has mercy in his heart. He has mercy in his heart for these disciples, and he has mercy in his heart for all of those that fear him. So we not only have Jesus fulfilling an insuff insufficiency, we also know that he um, gave them some implication of how they're walking with God. And we also see that um, he um, told them that one last thing here. Um, he wanted to make sure that they knew who he, knew who he was. So number one was uh, insufficiency. Number two was uh, indictment. And number three was uh, he gave them and he taught them that they were implying certain things. And now look at Matthew 12. Let's go back to Matthew 12. Look at verse number eight. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. So while all you guys, all you Pharisees, all you want to do is, is point the finger, I'm going to let you know who I am. Jesus tells them his identity. He says, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. Jesus made his identity very clear to these Pharisees. You see, Jesus was greater than the temple. Jesus was the Lord of of the Sabbath. By setting forth this claim, Jesus claimed his divinity. Because you remember over there in Matthew 23 and 21, it says that 
the one greater than the temple was the only one who dwelled in it. And if there were anyone who knew anything about the laws of the Sabbath, it was the one who made it, which was Jesus, because he was Lord of the Sabbath. Jesus knew what was and was what was not permitted on the Sabbath because he is the one that wrote the Sabbath law. You see, in, in, in our text, Jesus says that the true purpose of the Sabbath, he said the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. The Pharisees had got so distorted, they got so wrapped up in their law keeping that they distorted the word of God and they made it a burden instead of a blessing. Jesus knew the true purpose and he defended his disciples against their baseless applications and their baseless accusations. You know, it's sad that when we look at history, we see people like uh, David Koresh, uh, Jim Jones, all these so-called uh, men of God leading the people to their untimely deaths. But see, once we understand it, and I'm about, to, I'm about to come down, y'all, short flight. Once we understand that when we know who Jesus is, when we properly identify who he is, yes. and we can do that from the passages that we just read. Amen. In Matthew 12, we see that Jesus, he cares for the poor. That's right. Jesus lets us know that we must properly understand who he is. And even when we fall, Jesus says, I will be merciful to you. Amen. Jesus makes one last claim when he says, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. Amen. If you're here this evening and we know that we all go through some things in this life. But the lesson is this. Make sure that whatever we're doing, make sure it's according to the will of God. Amen. Because as I said this morning, we're trying, to, we're trying to pull down some of these strongholds out here. Amen. They're snatching our people left and right. And once they get in, it's hard to get out. It's hard to get them out. So our admonition this evening to, it's to root ourselves in the word of God. Amen. I thank you for your time. I don't see any uh, visitors here this evening. But if you stand in need of prayer, um, you could do so at this time as you come forward and make